Welcome this morning to another beautiful, glorious day. This is the voice of Isaiah Phillips on the Potter's Gate online broadcast. Welcome to our prophetic prayer school. This morning, by the grace of the Lord, we will journey into the heart of a father again in the place of prayer. We will seek to know his heart, his mind, his will, his counsel, and his intention for this brand new day. This is the beginning of a brand new month. Today is the first of July, and we want to thank God for his mercy, love, and grace. We want to appreciate his goodness, his eternal love that never fails. The fact that we are alive to see this brand new day, to see the beginning of another month, I think we need to give praise and glory and honor to him. And we want to thank him this morning for granting us the privilege to see another br brand new day. So let us pray this morning as we look again into his heart and his mind as we journey in the spirit. Father, we honor you this day. We glorify you. We appreciate you. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and love and grace. Thank you for truth. Thank you, Father, for your wisdom. Thank you for understanding, counsel, revelation. Thank you, O oh God, that this day you have once again gathered our hearts unto you. You have invited us and we have received, O oh God, this invitation. We've come before your throne. We have come to honor you, to glorify you. We've come to magnify you. We have come to lift you high, O oh God. We've come to celebrate your majesty. We've come to proclaim your glory and fame in the earth, O oh God. For this reason we live, for this reason we have been created, O oh God, to bring glory and praise to you. And so, Father, we proclaim this day, O oh God, as we enter into this new month, into this new day, into these days of the end, O oh God, that everything that our life is means, O oh God, will be, O oh God, an offering to you. Lord, personally, I present myself to you this morning as I present my home, my family, present my wife, my children, O oh God. And I present everyone, O oh God, that you've committed into my, into my hand, O oh God, that their life this morning will be an offering unto you, a living sacrifice. Yes, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. I commit this nation, I commit, O oh God, this land, I commit our continent before you. We proclaim that your church, your ecclesia this day, O oh God, indeed, will be awakened to the reality and counsel of your purpose and intention for this brand new day. Father, that our hearts, yes, will be yearning towards your intention, that once again will be found, O oh God, yes, in the center core of your will, that our plan and desires, O oh God, will be, yes, to glorify you, to honor you, that we'll seek nothing else, O oh God, but to bring glory and pleasure to you father so once again this morning as we renew our vow we renew oh god our commitment our engagement to you that nothing will separate us nothing will distract us from the place of your good pleasure our desire this morning is to drink of you we want to know you more we want to walk with you we want to please you everything that we do yes the breath that we take in oh god the words the thoughts Lord, that comes into our minds, our imagination, everything, oh God. Let it be focused towards bringing honor and glory to you. I pray this morning, oh God, that we be saturated, oh God, with a desire to love you, with a passion, oh God, for you and you alone. Lord, in this day where we are being seduced by so many things that looks good, that seem good, we want to keep our eyes and our focus on you. We want to maintain a pursuit. We want our heart to continue to pulsate to us your passion, to us your desire. That is my prayer this morning, O oh Father. That nothing else will matter to us. That we will continue to press in that in the place where we are found in you. That we will be able to, yes, understand, know what you will desire. Know what you long for. And that's what we are going to give to you. That's which is your heart desire, is what we want to present to you, O oh God. Nothing else, O oh God. Nothing else, O oh God. Our desire is to present to you what you want, the meal you want to eat, the food you desire. You said, there is a meal that I desire to eat. There's a food that you desire. Yes, that's what, what we want to present to you. Nothing else, O oh Father. Yes, Lord, in serving you, in bringing you good pleasure, we want to find the definition of ministry. So we thank you. We honor you. 
We glorify your name. We bless you, O oh God. May your kingdom come this day. May your will be done on earth as it is established in heaven. May your counsel find expression in us and through us this morning. We pray in the name of Jesus that those areas that we are still struggling with, that we will answer off and we will allow you to do your bidding, O oh God, to do that which you desire. We pray. Come, Lord, take your place. May your spirit, your precious Holy Spirit, yes, the third person of the Trinity, may he guide us. May we lead. Yes, may we be led by him. May we hear his voice leading us to the place that you desire. Nothing else matters. It's you that we want to see. And we know that as much, <clears throat> as long as we continue to see you, we will see the things you want us to see. As long as we maintain our focus on you, you will direct us. You will point at the things you will want us, O oh God, to carry out for you. It is in knowing you that we, are, that we can represent you, Father. It's in knowing you that we can please you. It's in knowing you that we can honor you. So my prayer this morning for myself, O oh God, is that I may know you. That I may know you. The fellowship of your suffering. That I may be conformed, yes, to your image, to your wisdom, to your knowledge, to your understanding. This is my prayer. And this is the prayer I pray for my fellow brothers and sisters this morning. That we may know you. Either at all, we are yet to see and we are yet to find a people in the earth who can boldly say that they have come to know all of you. We still know you in part. We know you in measure. But we want to go beyond the measure that we have. We want to go deeper because it's in knowing you that we get to discover a lot about ourselves. And the more we discover you, the more we see our frailty, the more we see our weakness, the more we see our failures, the more we see those hidden areas of our life because you are the light. You are the light. When we know you, we embrace light. When light shines, darkness, yes, is dispersed. We thank you this morning. We honor you. We glorify you. May your kingdom come. Come in your fullness. Come in your wisdom. Come in your glory. Come in your power. Come, Lord. Come into those areas of our life. Come into those space, oh God, that we are still in charge of. Come, Lord. Take your place this morning. We bless your name. We glorify you. We honor you. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Touch us. Touch us in a new way, in a special way. Make us, oh God, an instrument. Empower us. Endow us this morning with all of you. Feel us. Breathe on us again as we begin this new month. Breathe on us that we may go forth, oh God. Yes, in the power of the Spirit. Feed us that we may go forth in the power of this meal. Grant us grace to drink that we may go forth not thirsty. So many things this day, oh God. Yes, that seeks longing to want to quench this this but we know lord they will not suffice they cannot suffice they are not enough so father we have come we allow you god this morning to walk in our lives deal with us as you will you you know us more than we know ourselves <laughs> you love us more than we love ourselves there is nothing we can ever seek that is good for ourselves <laughs> that you have not desire a hundredfold ten times better yes you love us more than we love ourselves. We tend to want to judge you based on the love we have for ourselves. Yet the love we have for ourselves is fickle. It's fleshy, it's carnal, it's selfish, it's self-centered. It's so myopic that we don't even understand what, what it means to love ourselves. It's when we discover you that we get to know that we get to love you. So we thank you this morning. Teach us how to love you that we can love ourselves. Teach us how to love you so that we can love ourselves. Because it's the love that we have for ourselves that we can, yes, give and extend to others. So if we don't know you, we can love ourselves. And if we don't love ourselves, we cannot love others. Our love for ourselves is selfish. It's fickle. It's blind. It's blind. At least that's what I've come to realize. I don't even know how to love myself. Not to talk of loving my family and loving my neighbors. We have to learn to love you, to love ourselves. He says we must love our neighbor as we love ourselves. How do we love self if we don't love you? You are the definition of love. <laughs> you are the very definition. You are love. God is love. 
your nature, your character, your, his love. And when we begin to understand you, we understand what love is. So we thank you this morning. Blessed be your name. Thank you that you're teaching us, you're building us, you're empowering us, you're endowing us, oh God. You're enabling us. Thank you, Father, for the revelation of truth and life that we are coming to know in you. The more we have an ascended revelation of Jesus Christ, the more we know the will. The more we get to know your ways, the more we get to understand and embrace your counsel. Yes, we want all of you. In the days where men are settling for religion and tradition, in the day where men are settling for, yes, that which looks presentable, that which men call Christianity. Yet there's a further journey beyond the institution, beyond the gathering, beyond the, the music, beyond the offerings. There's a further journey beyond, oh God, the coming together and, and all of the things that we have come to benchmark. There is more. You went further. You went further to pray. There's always a further journey. There's always a pressing further. There's always a pressing inner. There's always the inner court. We refuse to settle for the outer. We refuse to settle even for the, the table of candlelight and the and the table of uh, and, and the table of shoe bread and and, and 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 the brazen altar and all of the things, oh God, that defines activity. Yes, they are good, but we refuse to settle for this. We want to go beyond. We want to go yonder. We want to go to the place of no return. We want to come to the place, yes, that is called holies of holy. We want to have interaction with you there oh god we want to know you you said that is where you're gonna meet with us where the cherubims meet where the where the wings of the cherubim meets yes at the mercy seat you said there i will meet with you that is our pursuit that is our longing that is where we want to find ourselves oh god in the day where men are settling for yes the things that they can achieve the things that they have received in the day where we can so easily settle for some blessings and anointing and giftings and all of these and and whatever it is father we say we want to go beyond that we want to have you just like you you want us you don't just want what we can present. You want us. We are the harvest that you want. So help us to understand this, oh God. As we journey, as we engage daily, help us to understand that it's a relationship that you want. It's a relationship that you desire. You say you are mindful of us. Help us to be mindful of you. Help us as we journey through the day, as we go through the important meetings and decisions and things that we need to do. As we meet people, help us to understand that we need to meet you first, that we need to keep you, yes, posted at every interval, at every situation. Help us to know that you are there and that you promise you will never leave us. So we bless your name once again this morning. We glorify you for these prayers of assurance. For these prayers of renewal, for this prayer, yes, of exchanging of vows. This is the exchanging of our vows today. A covenant of who we are, where we are in you. Deliver us, O oh God, from the things that have distracted us from, yes, where you've called us to be. Deliver us, O oh God, from the things that we can so easily, yes, uh, uh, exchange for you. Deliver us, O oh God, yes. From lusting after your things while not seeking your heart. Deliver us, O oh God, from questing after your things and not really seeking your heart. Deliver me, O oh God, from things, things, the things, the things of God. I want to come into him, into God. So, Father, we pray this morning, oh God. Yes, yes. This must sound crazy, but this is very important. That our prayer, that our pursuit is not just about saving the world. Why we are called to save the world, Father. We want to come into you. We want to, because when we, when we find our place in you. When Jesus found his place in you. When Jesus was totally consumed by the Christ. The redemption of creation took him three and a half years. He was done. What a lesson we'll always need to learn. He was done. Sometimes things look so complex and difficult. 
because of how we look at them, because of where we stand. But if we choose to follow your path and follow, yes, your, your desire, your intentions, if we go through, yes, the path that you have created for us is a faster path, is more quicker. We think that doing it our own way, going through it in our own wisdom, we think we can get it done better and quicker and faster. I've learned that, that it never work, doesn't work. So we discard the wisdom of men. We lay down the ways of men. We lay down the ideas that we have been seduced with. The wrong image that has been built within us. The wrong Christ that we have received. The wrong God we have exchanged for you. Many things that have painted a different image of God to us. That we think that we are actually serving the true God. Uh, but when we look at your word. Your word paints a different way. Different picture. Jesus you say I am the way. Meaning that there are other ways. That will come to want to lie to us. That will look like the ways of God. That will sound like Christ. Yes, he said, before you return, there will be many Jesuses appearing. There will be many voices saying, we are the way. We are the, we are the Savior. We are the Redeemer. And we are falling for these ways. We are, we are in the midst of this great deception today. And you are beginning to open my eyes to these things. We cannot shut change. The place of God for the things of God. That's, that's how we know that we are not deceived. When our heart is not merely seeking to want to walk for God. But walk with God. He said to Abraham. Abraham, walk with me. <laughs> and be perfect. Walk with me and be mature. It's in walking with him that we get to be perfected. Is in walking with him, not walking for him. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Not walking for him. It's in walking with him that we are able to walk for him. Let's not, let's not, let's not get it wrong again. In this brand new day, we want to get it right. Want to get it right. So, Father, we thank you. We want to walk with you, as you said to the Father of Faith. That faith is walking with you. As you told him, Father, we want to walk with you. We want to understand. We want to live life walking with you. Not just walking for you. We don't want to be bond slaves. We don't want to be like they call them. Orphans. Slaves. It is slaves that have no sense of relationship. Slaves. Mm. You've called us to walk with you. To have a place in you. A relationship with you. You know friends. Having a relationship with God. Is the most difficult thing for. A person who has not totally yielded. His or her soul to the Lord. It's the most difficult thing to do. To walk with God if we have not surrendered to God. You see, it's easy to use things and, uh, and uh, go for things and commit to things in exchange for really serving God. Many, I am discovering many of us have, have not really come to know what it means just to have God alone and be satisfied with Him. Because First of all, it's the strange phenomenon. The things they've told us about God is just about working for God. You see, many of us came into the things, uh, the, the environment of God with a, a mindset of the um, an employer and employee. They're just going to work for God. And he, then he's going to reward me. Then he's going to pay me back, you know. Working for a salary is, is that same mindset that we, we have amen, in the world system that we have brought into, or into the things of the spirit. It's the same idea. I just want just to walk for God. I want to walk for God. So we find fulfillment in walking for God without even having the capacity to just walk with him. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about, but I know... I am saying 
the most truthful and the most relevant thing for this day this seasons that we live in we, it's easy for me to you know to express how i can you know preach and um, and you know as long as i've got something that I, I need to go preach i need to go tell somebody it gives me a sense of service for god <laughs> You see, this is one of the reasons why God brought me into the, the, the ministry of prayer. Because I, I noticed that there was a period, of course, this was a long time in my life, that I have a desire to want to walk for God. I just want to do something. Only for me to realize later that even that sense of want to walk for God is basically to cover, to cover something in my life. That I, 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 I don't, I, you know, that, that, that I don't want it to continue to remain you know empty i want to feel that thing but i thought if i could just walk for i didn't know this until the lord opened my eyes see what i'm saying right now only people who are truth, truthful and sincere will be able to agree with me if 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 if, if your ideology and your perceptions about god has not been has not been engaged truly engaged with truth you're not going to understand what i'm talking about in fact you you're going to just walk away and say what's this talk? what is he talking about <laughs> and we call to walk call, call to walk for god with service you know so we want to service the things of god yes but if that is our focus then we can end up like john to John, John, John the Baptist. He, there was no greater a prophet than John the Baptist. There was no greater a prophet than John the Baptist. This was the declaration of Jesus. He says, "There is no prophet as great as John the Baptist. No prophet, no prophet as great as John the Baptist." Yet the Scripture says, "The least in the kingdom is greater than John." So you got to ask yourself, what make the least in the kingdom greater than John? John. <laughs> Because in the kingdom, it's not about working for God. It's about working with God. When you're in the kingdom, you're, you're within the ambience. You're within, you know, you have come to see things. You have come to embrace him. It's from that life in the kingdom that we walk with him, that we walk for him. You say that John did not walk with God. Uh, no, that's not what I'm saying. But they said that the idea of the prophetic in terms of going just to speak for God and doing things for God is good, but it's not good enough if we come into amen, what is called the values of the kingdom. No wonder that John after a period that he was arrested, you know the question, we've dealt with this before. This is a man he knew. This is a man that even before he was born they had an interaction while both of them were in the womb. J John knew Jesus from the womb. Yet, at, 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 at that key moment in his life where the pain, the pain, the pain, where the pain and the, and the pressure of life and, and, and the image of his death was staring him at the face. He said in the prison, go ask, is he the one to come or should we be waiting for another one? What in the world triggers such a thought? To the point that that thought becomes a word that John began to disbelieve the one he knew before he was born. You see, this is what I'm talking about, brethren. This, you see, when we settle for the Christianity and the, and the relationship that is just you know superficial that is just outward based that is just you know I, have you seen how those sisters are very committed in the church you will see them they, they've been in the church all their life busy busy working for god the brother you will see him with a suit sunday morning he's the first person in church i mean everything but these people are totally far away from getting to know if you sit them down and you start asking them deep questions you know private question about their spiritual life is empty. They give them a service without a relationship. And this is why so many people today are, you know, are, are discouraged about church thing. 
In fact, this is why many people finally woke up, said, uh uh, this church thing is no longer for me. It's not like church is not good, he designed it. Okay, we can argue about the pattern. Maybe he didn't design the pattern that we see, but certainly he wants us to meet, to gather. But guess what? We have, we have exchanged the gathering and all of the preaching and all of the things that we do and all of the things we call fellowship. We've exchanged that for God to the point that when God walks into that place, we can't even recognize him. If we are going to be a generation that is going to perfect, that is going to take a people, the question I've been asking, <clears throat> I've been asking myself for, for you know, for few years now in fact I've, i shared this question with many people all of the mess that we have created in the body of christ i am not going to say they because we i'm part of them i'm not going to be one of those who just say it's them no we create so many mess who is going to clean those mess how are we going to fix those mess all right a lot of people today who are backsliding a lot of christians who have gone back there are Christians who have gone back to Islam. There are many who have gone back to, you know, the new age, into yoga, into, you know, Christians that I've even met. Who, who today believe more in yoga than believing in Christ. They believe in the Eastern religion. They believe in self-meditation and self, you know, you know, perfection. You know, than, you know, okay, the moment he said, no, no, Christian, let's go. No, 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 no. I said, no, I don't want to be part of that. Please, leave me. Leave. <laughs> These are people that will, once we're committed and zealous for the things of God, not for God. You see, that's why I love the separation God began to do in my life. And God, you know, used me to, to carry out in the life of many. Some of you are watching me. I know you've, God has delivered you from religions. Many of you are sitting in your homes. You're connecting to God. You have to know him. Not like what they're doing out there in terms of church is not good. No, no. Is that they are not searching for God. They are searching for something to fulfill emptiness in their life by using God. By using the gift. That's why somebody will go to church in the morning. They want a prophetic word from the man of God. So the man of God is forced. Even if, even if he has nothing to say, he is forced to cook up something. He's forced to wind the people. You've got to wind the people. You know, it's like those toys you used, we used to have back in those days. I don't know if you know those toys that, you know, they, they've got a winder behind. You have to wind them, wind them, wind them. Yes, before the motor works, then you see the thing. Then it works for a while. Then once the winder finishes, it, it does it. It's dead. That's how the life of many Christians are. You wind them, you wind them, you wind them, you wind them. When you wind them, yes, hallelujah. Hmm. I believe God. I believe it, it, it even becomes even more, more worse when what they are believing God for, they got a breakthrough. Then they build a camp around it, you see. That's why people have the God of this, the God of that in the church. We need to go back to the base. And I won't lie to you. The beginning of seeking to want to walk with God is going to be difficult because your soul is going to fight you bitter. Ah, your, oh my Lord, your soul is going to resist you. Because your soul is used to, you know, good service, good work, good message, good preaching. It's good. But like the Bible says, ever learning. Ever, they are ever learning, but they never come. They're ever learning. They're in, they're in that conference. They're in that program. They're in that teaching. They're in that you know broadcast. They're e ever learning. But the grace, the ability to take what they have learned and practice it, that has been taken from them. The soul has taken that from them. So like I'll say, the devil doesn't mind us learn all of this thing. Walk in all of this truth. It doesn't mind. As long as we don't make contact with the things of the spirit. It doesn't mind you have the revelation. As long as the revelation cannot be translated. 
into experience. He doesn't mind. He doesn't mind you have a truth. As long as the truth cannot change your values and character, he doesn't mind. The devil, you think the devil cares that you have a revelation? No, he doesn't care. He doesn't care that we fill a, a stadia. The 10,000, the 1 million people gather. The devil does not mind. He's not afraid of those people. The people that he's afraid of are those who are quick to respond to the heartbeat of God. You see, I learned that the Lord delivered me from organized religion called Christianity. The Lord delivered me from the ways of men. I began to search. Sometimes in your searching you will cry because you're not hearing. There are too many noise, too many interference. You feel lonely. <laughs> yes, let me help you. You feel lonely and you feel alone. When you want to find God, you think you're losing your mind. You would think you have actually lost everything that matters in life. And in fact, that's what they want you to lose. You have to lose your suki. You have to lose your mind to gain the mind of Christ. Every time we pray, <laughs> I'm not conformed to this world, but I'm transformed by the renewing of my mind. Do you know what that means? Your silent prayer, you shouldn't pray if you're not ready. <laughs> because they will take you on your word. It's not an easy thing. I'm not going to lie to you. But it's doable. The grace of God begins to fall upon a man or woman. Who, whose heart is set, set on a journey. When your heart is set on a journey. When you begin to search. When you begin to quest. When you begin to long for. When your mind starts seeking. That you're not, you don't want to be. Listen to the word. You don't want to be a God user. Many of us grew up. We didn't even know we were using God. But that's how we were wired. The church we grew up. The environment. The Christianity we were introduced to. Showed us how to use God. So we never have a relationship. We prostituted the things of God. We prostituted the things of the spirit. That's what is called Babylon the Halot. You see, and Harlot will make you have a pleasure as long as you can pay. But guess what? She doesn't have a relationship with you. She doesn't need a relationship with you. But she will, she will give you, she will sell you a pleasure. Let's not forget these things. We need to remind ourselves where we came out from so that we don't, we don't slide back. We don't, we don't cascade back into that same thing. I need to remind myself as I need to remind you. Lest we find ourselves, you know, sliding back. And then you forgot what connected you to Isaiah Phillips. That it's not about the good message. But it's about honesty. It's about truth. That is about passion. It's about being different. It's about wanting to raise a standard. It's about seeking to know God. Because that is what my life is all about. I'm not after all of the shirays out there. I want a people who God can address for him. I want a people that when God comes to South Africa, he can point at them. He can say, yes, I found Marvin. I found Stephen. I found Myrtle. Oh, I, yes, I found Kumisa. Oh, yeah, yes, I found this one. I found, yes, that's what I'm looking for. That when God comes to town... They can stop by in your house. When if anything is about to happen, you can pick the signal. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not about it. Who cares if somebody blesses you or doesn't bless you? Who cares about the money somebody gives or someone does not give? Who cares about that? He takes care of me. And if there is nothing to eat, let me eat my vegetables and, and, and bread. And my pap. Who cares? Our hearts must be focused on the things that matter. What matters is to pursue him. 
until we apprehend him. That's what Paul said. That's why God could invest his entire life. The entire economy of God was positioned in the life of a man called Paul. He was, he was formerly a, man, a religious man who killed in the name of God. He thought he was doing God a service. He was pursuing and killing Christians all over. He thought, he thought, he thought, he thought he was doing God a service. He thought those people were the bad ones. He thought the Pharisee, where he belonged, were the good. Until, until heaven collided with him. Until they struck him down, blind for three days. Have you been baptized with such blindness? It's a baptism. Until that happens in our life, we will be pursuing things. We'll be seeking for things. You see how zealous Saul was? Did you see how zealous? He went to the high priest. Give me a letter. I'm going to go to Damascus and make sure. Yes. That's how powerful the soul can deceive us. That's the, that's the height of the seduction of the soul. The soul can make us think we're serving God. Many people out there like that. Many ministers out there. That's why when the enemy takes them there and they think every, then he just punches them. He just bring one little sin into their life. He just expose one little area of their life and all their empires, all their wall crashes down. Have you seen how those men of God, People who we, we used to listen to them. We watched them, you know, on the television, all of that. Only for them, only for them to discover that the people discover this guy's a gay, a bishop, gay, pastors, gay, having two wives, two, you know. Why? Because it, it is a service. You see, when we don't have a personal relationship, it's easy for the devil to bring sin into our life and say it's okay. After all, it's just a service. You see, but I try as much as possible to keep you guys in my mind. Every one of you that's following us, I, I try to keep you in my mind. And keep you in my heart, in my thoughts. This is not just a service to me. There's something that has been deposited. And it's my prayer that we will truly all understand. That if Isaiah is not there tomorrow, that you will carry on the walk. Because it's not a joke. There are too many liars, deceivers out there. It's time we begin to make a difference. Let it be said, well, everybody lies, but not this ones. Not this ones. Friends, we need to talk to each other. We need to talk to God. If we don't have the real thing, then let's not look for something as an alternative to the real. Let's keep searching. Let's keep pressing in. Let's keep pursuing. Let's keep pursuing him until we gain the real thing. I'm not going to stop and I'm not going to stop telling you the truth. Even if you don't like it, you're going to hear it. Even if you don't want to hear it, you're going to... I'm going to still push it to your, you know, to your ears. I'm going to force you to eat the food. Because that's what is going to save you and save many lives. Have you noticed that what will save the world at the end will be that the people awake into truth. So, supposing somebody wakes up and says, well, I've been lied to. Finally, this man lied to me. Now I need the truth. And even the people who claim to have the truth <laughs> don't have the truth. What do you think is going to happen? We all cannot put all our head in one direction. Let the people be different. It's called a remnant generation. Remember Sister Myrtle, I used to say that even within the remnants, there are remnants. Even within the remnants, there are still remnants. You see, These are messages of the remnants. Maybe this is what we should be calling this. This is a message for the remnant, a remnant generation. A people set aside, a people called out. 
It's not, this is not a message out there. That's why when you preach this thing, people will stone you. They will call you all kinds of names. <laughs> I'm getting that of late. Because people cannot relate to what you're talking about. I'm telling you, people among us will start living. They will start getting disillusioned. Because what is he talking about again? <laughs> what is he talking about again? Jesus raised the standard. Amen. 70 left him. He turned to the 12. He said, are you guys also going? We have to constantly, continually raise the bar, the standard. We have to constantly remind ourselves of what we have been invited into. Listen, this is not about possessing something. No, nobody gave you. A, I never called you into a message of possessing things. No, no. I called you into a message of possessing God. Of earning God. Of allowing God to sit in your life. To dwell in your heart. Amen. To live within the structures of your being. It will cost you everything. But the joy will be that you gain God. You gain Christ. Do you know what that means? To gain God means when you open the scripture. Scripture comes alive. The power of God, and we're not talking about seeking God for power, no. But because Christ has come to dwell in you, your hand becomes the extension of his hand. The words that you speak are no longer your words. They are his words. They are life. Your words are life and death to them that are dying. You become a solution. You become an answer. People come into your space. Without even them opening their mouth, you start telling them their history. And you tell them, see, this is what the Lord will have me say to you. Go, it is well with you. How would you like such a life? That you cannot be bribed. If somebody says, hey, here's money. Uh, we want you to do X, Y, Z. You say, well, sorry, we don't do that where I belong. You say, where you belong. We just gave the same money to that bishop, to that, you know, they took it. What's your problem? You say, well, I'm not among them. I'm not part of their tribe. They're not part of my tribe. You say, are you not all Christians? Sorry, they are Christian. I'm not a Christian. Who are you? Where are you from? <laughs> you say, well, I'm in the kingdom. It's a kingdom that I belong how would you like such a life? That you, a life that you will no longer have a need for anything because as you are thinking about it, it's done for you. How would you like such a life? The heaven can give you secrets, tell you secrets. The Bible says, yes, the secrets, the secret, secret of God belongs amen, to them who fears him. God has secrets. You think everybody just know everything? No, no, no. God has secrets. Those secrets are only revealed to those who fear him. To fear him is to carry his presence. Only carriers of his presence, amen, understand what it means to fear God. This is not dreading God. It's a reverential reality of his presence. When you, when you see him, you hide your face. This is what we're talking about. Let's remind ourselves again of who we are. What we are called to do. What we are called into. Lest we come into this beautiful, glorious day and atmosphere. And we, we start, you know, reinventing our old self. We don't want to do that. The old man must die. The new man. The child must die. The son must leave. The new man must leave. This is the day of the new man. The old man must be crucified. And we must constantly keep that old man crucified. Lest the old man jump out of the cross. <laughs> and begin to tell us what to do. That's why I said some time ago. We have to learn to master. The things that are causing us pain. It's not an easy thing. Jesus learned, Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, before him, he endured the cross. Endurance is the word for this season. Father, we bless you this day. Truths like this are becoming scarce. And so we, we don't take it for granted if you speak to us in this manner. 
fountain of life we want to drink. Service cannot f- fulfill us. I would love to build things. I want to build things for you in the earth. It, it has always been my desire to build schools. Good schools for children who are not privileged to go to such quality school. My desire to build, yes, institutions to train, to teach leaders. School for marriage. Because we see how our marriages, our homes are falling apart. Because we all are just carriers of what somebody told us, of what our parent told us. We've not really learned what it means to be prepped, to be prepared. For what is called marriage. I want to have a school for marriage. Just for marriage. School where we can teach. Finance. How to manage. Money. Because money is a key. It's an important aspect. Of life. Not teach this thing people call. Economics. No. Practicality of managing money. Yes. We can learn it. Many are in debts, generational debts, and they don't even know how to get out of it. We can have a school like that. Biblical principle that we can teach people how to manage things. School that children from the beginning can learn to grow up with the right frame of mind and thoughts. Right identity with before before the culture catch them and damage them through ungodly media that we can build them up and prepare the next leaders but lord all of these good things means nothing if your presence is not sought for if you are not the focus if you are not the desire if you are not what we are seeking for those things as much as they are good and wonderful and excellent a desire yet you, you surpass them in the order of priority so Lord as we go about seeking to do something for you Help us to understand that you must first do something in us. Lest we use our own hands to corrupt the things we claim we're doing for you. Lest we use our own very mind to pollute the things that we want to do for you. So that's why we say, let you first of all find resident and what that means is that sometimes you will shut down the things we want to do for you because you're going to try us you're going to test us you only commit the economy of your kingdom are only committed yes to faithful steward a stewardship is one that is committed to the to the to the values of the master when the master of the house comes and he calls him to give an account. Yes. And he gives an account based on his standard. Bless is such. Many things men are going to be building. I'm not even going to go into that now. I guess I'll keep that for maybe tomorrow or next time we'll meet. We're going to be stepping into Genesis 10. Remember we've dealt with Genesis 8, 9. Now we're going to be dealing with 10. Genesis 10 is the place of the building of things. Maybe this is the reason why God has been speaking to us along this line. Yes. I didn't even, it never occurred to me, but it, you know, it, it, it's just making sense now. I'm going to be looking at Genesis all right, chapter 10. Because uh, we remember we're still dealing with the concept of the economy of God. And we're dealing with amen, uh, engaging the spirit of the age. Uh, we have not forgotten. All of that is part of what we are building. We're building. We're building up. We're building something in the spirit. This is why a few, few, few days ago, I, I mean, I was strongly under an attack. I knew it was the devil. 
He didn't want this truth to come forth, to come, to come through. We believe God that he will grant us grace and capacity and tenacity to keep our eyes focused on the Lord. We must keep our eyes. Listen, friends, what matters should be what matters. And what matters should be what matters first to God. And what matters first to God should be that you are seeking his heart. That is the value star that he gave to us. He said, I have found a man whose heart is after my things. No, he never said that. He didn't say, I have found a man whose heart is after my anointing. No, 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 no. He didn't say, oh, well, I found a woman whose passion is to serve me. No, 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 no. He said, I found a man whose heart is after me, after me, after me, after me, after me. In all the sins of David, that, that heart that David had, that quest that David had, Place him above every other one. <laughs> the Lord never said, Oh, well, we're going to be restoring the tabernacle of Elijah. <laughs> he never said, We're going to be restoring the tabernacle of God knows who. No. He said, In the last day, the tabernacle of, of David will be restored. Why? Because of the heart of David. You see, David was not a perfect man. Who's talking about perfection? No. We're talking about a heart. That will lead us to perfection. He's the one who perfects us. We can't perfect ourselves. But when you have a heart. That is open like David. That when you are caught. And your hand is caught in the cookie jar. That you are not looking to blame somebody. You say well Lord it's me. I have sinned. That's, you see that's what makes David different from even Adam. David was quick to say it's me. It's me. It's me. Because he knew, you know, I was thinking about that some, you know, some time back. That David was not shy of what people would think about him when he acknowledges his sin. You see, that's the difference between David and Saul. Saul was thinking about what would the people say? What would the people say? You see, when you're thinking about doing things just for the people, even if, you're, if, you, even if you want to build things for people and all your desire is how will people see the thing how will people look at it if people is your focus aya you will be compromised at some point i'm telling you it must be what he thinks you see when god becomes the first factor of our life ah uh, that saves us a lot of things it saves us from so many things that's why david is different he says, let the judgment fall on me, not the people. <laughs> and they say, okay, so you, are, you, 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 be, you, you must pay for this judgment. Choose one. You fall in the hands of your enemy, will allow the enemy comes and ravish and destroy your city, destroy everything. Or you fall under the judgment of God. David is wise. <laughs> He said, no, don't, don't let my enemy judge me. You judge me for yourself. He knew, Lord, I love that man. I love that man. He knew the heart of God. That's what we're talking about. I want to continually adjust your heart as I adjust mine. You see, in this last day, our heart, our, our hand must be constantly on that, you know, adjustment system. You know, sometimes the thing is going this way. You, know, you have to quickly bring it back. You bring it back. You bring it back. You keep it. You keep it adjusted. You know, you want to keep it logging. You want to keep it logging because there are all kinds of things coming, lies, deceptions, all kinds of things coming to derail you. Remember what I said yesterday? The moment, the moment Peter took his eyes off the Lord, he was already walking on the water. I always like to emphasize that. Peter was already walking. Why? Because his eyes was on him. As long as your eyes is on him, you will walk on water. You will subdue. But the moment you take your eyes off him and begin to listen to the praise of man and begin to wave, <laughs> hallelujah, yeah, yeah, we're doing it, yeah, yeah, can't you see? <laughs> hallelujah, pray the Lord is good. <laughs> Brother, you're already sinking. And I'm not just talking about, you know, getting distracted by sin. No, no, no. I'm talking about things that 
are not expedient. People that are not supposed to be in your life. <clears throat> a man of God. Oh, how hallelujah. Is that, I love what you're doing. You know, okay, we're friends. This man began to get <clears throat> agitated because I'm no longer calling him. And he, I, I'm no longer commenting on what he's doing. I said, but that's not... Don't you understand? After this COVID thing has, has, has brought my, my work to another dimension that I cannot be here and there. I need to be focused. I need to keep the people. I'm a prophet. I need to keep the people aligned with what God is saying. You know what the Lord told me? This man is not supposed to be in your life. I unfriend him. I deleted him. Simple. It's that simple. I'm not going to allow a gift to distract me from him. He can do his ministry where he's doing it, his own, in his own level. But when it comes to my work and my assignment to, you know, representing the heart and the mind of God, sorry, I'm not even going to allow the closest person to me to get in between that. No, it's not going to happen. So it's easy for me to delete such a person. When I see him tomorrow, we'll still greet if we see. But guess what? If I have to go, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. That's what I'm talking about. You have to come to certain conclusion. The things that is going to, when you leave that place, you feel, you feel that the Lord has left you. You feel a drop in the standard. No, you, that's not the place you need to be. You need to be in a place where people are questing and yearning and pursuing. People that will challenge you, motivate you. You see? Many people, many Christians, let me not say many, many believers will miss God not because they are not seeking the direction, but they got distracted by co-Christians, by co-ministers, by co-friends. Yes, yes. Remember that material I wrote two months ago, was it two months ago? Yes. Exposing the prophetic charlatans. Yes. The old prophet said to the young man, I'm also a prophet like you. You see, that was, that was, a, that was a blow be below the belt. That thing brought this. Okay, this guy is, he, he, is I mean, this is, this is a veteran. Who cares? What did God told you? You need to be careful. Lest you fall. The Bible says, let him, let him that think is stand. is a thought. We get defeated by the state of our mind. We get defeated by what we think others are thinking about us. We get defeated by judging ourselves based on how we think other feels about us. Did you get? Did, are you hearing what I'm saying? As about to round up, we get defeated. All right, by judging ourselves based on how we think others think about us. Who cares what people think about you? If Jesus had to be thinking about, you know, what the Pharisee thinks, what the Sadducees think, what the Romans, he would never have done the job. You will always have enemy to your die. There will always be people who hate you. There will always be those, no matter the good you do, there will always be those who will not like it, no matter how good you are. There will always be those who always find fault. Have you noticed there are people like that in our lives? No matter what you do, they will always, ah, he didn't say it right. No, no, no. He, he, he made mistakes. You should have done it better. They will never say, wow, you did it well. Those people are sick. Those people have a problem with themselves, not you. So why must you give those people time? Why must you give your energy to people like that? No, you should be focusing on things and people and places that will help you grow. That even if you're not doing it right, they will still encourage you. Go ahead. Those are the people. You, sh you should know where you're investing your life, your time. You see? You see, somebody hit a woman, he hit a woman, and you still go back to him tomorrow. <laughs> he says, love, you stupid. Something is wrong with you. Something is gone cuckoo in your brain. They get, the person is hitting you. You say, well, you see, but we love each other. <laughs> he, he or she is going to kill in the house in the name of love. You've got to have wisdom. You see, there are things. That's why they gave us the word of God. Amen. To benchmark our, our understanding, our values, and our choices. <laughs> I was thinking about that yesterday. I didn't even know why that thought. You know, you know, as a prophet, all kinds of thought comes to my mind. And I have to know how to sort them out. 
And I was thinking about that. Never go out with somebody you know you're not going to marry or it's not going to marry you. No, why are you doing with that person? Of course, I'm, that must be for the singles. <laughs> I mean, that's just a thought that came to my mind. You know, people go out with all kinds of people. And then they say, hey, the guy loves me. No, no, he doesn't love you. If he loves you, he will respect you. He will honor you. He will protect you. He will guide you. He will do things that you will know. Because listen to this. Whatever he's doing now is what the person is going to do. And let me not just make it him. Let's make it both sides. It's what he or she will do when you get married. So don't fool yourself. Don't invest your life on things and people that are not on the path of what the Lord is doing or saying in your life. It's just a, an advice. Lord, we want to bless your name. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for ministering to us. Thank you for your goodness and grace. What a beautiful day. What a day. What a, what a word to start a new month. Only you can do such a thing. You say, if any man will boast, let them boast in the Lord. I make my boast this morning in you, not in the flesh. No, we crucify the flesh. This morning, Father, we present our lives to you, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. It's our reasonable service. I pray for all my sisters, my brothers this morning. I pray for uh, Sister Nkumisa. I pray for Brother Mervyn. I pray for uh, Sister uh, Adioni, uh, Sister Myrtle, Sister uh, 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 Tina, of course, uh, uh, my wife, Victoria. I, I pray for uh, Brother Derek, all of the people, Brother Steve. These are people that I've seen this morning and many others that are joining us, wherever you're watching from. I pray for you. I ask that as we begin this new month, may this month be a month to where you will pursue God. You will do something. You will do something deliberate. Seeking God is something deliberate. You have to do it deliberately. It doesn't come just like that. No. You have to do it deliberately. I pray that you will do something deliberately this month. Just to show. To prove that he matters more than any other thing. And as you do that, I pray, yes, that the heavens will open. That breakthrough will begin to take place in your life. Yes, that in those areas that looks challenging and difficult, that the more you seek God, that suddenly, have you ever lost something? This has happened to me several times. Have you ever lost something? And you search everywhere. And suddenly you decide to ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, where is this thing? And like a voice just comes to your mind and say, go check there. I don't know if anybody have had, have had that experience several times. Friends, there are things that the Holy Spirit can help you to resolve quick and fast than you using your mind and using your brain. No, no, no. Relax. You see, you have to learn again to talk to God. One of the best way of prayer is just having a conversation with him. You talk to him and you let him talk back to you. You talk to him, you pause. You let him talk back to you. You talk to him, Lord, what do you think about this situation? Let him speak back to you. You will hear his voice. We honor you, Father, this day. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for your heart and mind. We honor you. Thank you, Lord, for the month of July. May it be a month that brings glory and pleasure to you. We bind our soul, mind, and thought to you. May your people prosper. May truth and mercy kiss themselves. May righteousness and, and peace kiss themselves in their life. Bring them to harmony with you. We honor you. Thank you, Lord, for my life, my home, my family, my children. Thank you, Lord, that in this month we proceed further, we press further into your heart, into your mind. Keep us, oh God. Keep us. All of this wonderful brethren, oh God, but must also keep our nation. Touch the heart of our leaders to do what is right. Touch your church. Bring people out of bondage, the bondage of religion and traditions of men. We thank you for your voice, for your heart, for your mind. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Thank you so much, everyone, this morning. Pr appreciate you joining us this morning, connecting with us. May he continue to bless you. May he continue to grant you strength and grace. May he continue to lift you up. Please do me a favor. Share this 
a, a message this morning. Let it challenge somebody out there. Let it minister to somebody. May we not get to the point where we exchange the things of God for God. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, my dear brother uh, uh, Bakiso, for connecting from Botswana. I appreciate it. God bless you this morning. We're just done. May I hope you'll be able to listen to you know, the, the, the whole audio again. God bless you. I appreciate everyone. May you prosper in the month of July. God bless you. Bye-bye. And please try to listen to the, the, the teaching I did yesterday you know, uh, in, in our prophetic leadership school. Excellent material. Excellent. Bye-bye.